All right, uh, so today uh, I am going to talk about tonic. So my background in Rust is very, very novice uh, to organizers. I probably have the least background in Rust kind of programming languages like C, C++. I have no experience in there. Uh, so Rust is kind of the gateway drug for me to learn systems programming or uh, any kind of, let's say, quote unquote, serious programming. So what I do is I just pick up some, some tools that I want to learn and then just try to implement something. So today the topic is about Tonic, gRPC and Protobuf, but I'm not going to touch any of them in detail. I just want to share my experiences. Hopefully uh, it, will, it will be helpful to anyone who is going to use these tools. I'm going to implement a chat service uh, which is a very bad chat service, but the my aim is just to uh, learn how Tonic works. So the rough outline is it's a, it's a short talk. The, the need, the protocol buffers, by, by what is it solving, and the pro remote procedure calls. The tool that I'm going to use, which is Tonic, uh, and then I, I hopefully I will demo the the thing that I created using this. So these, the main aim is sending data through the wire, uh, which is not an easy task. So you need to decide what kind of uh, structure, what kind of technology that you are going to use, how, how it's going to affect the data types, the data structures that they are, you are using, uh, the APIs that you are going to build, all of which depends on uh, the protocol that you're going to use. And, if you uh, are planning to uh, support multiple generations of the API, that gets a bit more complicated. Uh, you need to, to uh, think about backwards compatibility and forwards compatibility. Backwards compatibility is somewhat okay, uh, but forwards compatibility uh, is not easy to uh, sort out. And uh, there are several options if you go with the textual we, uh, there are JSON, uh, XML, and even if you want to cause terror, you can use CSV, uh, or uh, you can choose one of the binary uh, binary formats, but uh, you need to decide which one to use, tooling, the versioning, and everything. So in the uh, textual way, you can, some, some of these uh, can have schema, uh, some of these, these can be verbose, uh, like XML is uh, usually frowned upon with the verbosity of it, but uh, it, it has a very uh, robust schema option. Data representation can be hard for numbers, especially, and they can, and they are using a lot of bandwidth. So if you, if you want to push large volumes of data, these, these, these formats might not be very useful to you, uh, but at least they are usually universally agreed upon. So, if you if you want to, if you want your uh, uh, your system to talk to talk with XML, uh, another system can more or less agree on how to use your system. So, on the other hand, uh, if you are going to go with the binary. The advantage is one of the advantages is it can it is very concise, so you can pack a lot of data, uh, and the representations are usually close to native representation of the data. So I might be wrong, obviously, uh, but uh, not many commonly used. Like if if you want to use, just select any any of the APIs. It's not easy to find a Trift implementation, which is impl uh, a protocol created by Facebook or a protocol, of, a pro protocol buffer implementation, or another version, another uh, technology that you can use is Avro. So there, there, there are probably loads of them. Then, but the reason that I wanted to learn Tonic is uh, I want to see how, I was kind of trying to implement a very bad version of Kafka, but uh, you know, before I do that, I, I just wanted to learn a bit about binary communication. But I decided on protocol buffers. A big reason is Tonic uh, was using it. 
Uh, but uh, to just to summarize, it is a binary enco encoding uh, created by Google. Uh, currently, two versions are active, in active use, uh, protocol, protocol buffers version two and three. And if you want to change, if you want to support several generations of your API, uh, it does support forward and backwards compatibility. And you can learn more, obviously, if you just Google. <laughs> and it is quite simple. Um, so mainly if your data is uh, something like that, uh, a very simple representation uh, of some, some struct. Uh, in the second version of the protocol buffers, you, you just define the message, the, the data structure as such with a message uh, keyword. And in, in the version three, it's not that different, but uh, you might, uh, eagle eyed of you might have seen that required and optional has gone because in the, the, the new version, uh, all the fields became optional practically uh, because uh, for forward spec uh, compatibility of, uh, of, of the fields, the, one of the uh, restrictions was you cannot just remove required field. And the reason is the way that it is encoded in binary is uh, doesn't use the field names. Field na names come from the schema definition. So protofiles, instead of field names, it uses the numbers that you assign to them. So uh, if a number uh, is not there, uh, it is inferred that it is an optional, uh, optional field. So for forward compatibility, if, if something is not there, but it is not optional uh, in the second version, then it's, it's, uh, they, these, it's not compatible with the schema. So uh, that's my interpretation. Anyway, I, have, I, I don't remember reading this from somewhere, but it just makes sense. And if you want to dive a bit more academic into this, uh, this is an excellent book uh, on any kind of design that involves data intensive applications, as the title suggests. It is one of the Bibles that you can just, just read uh, and enjoy, even, even if you're not going to <laughs> work on this field. So I just uh, lifted this from that book. Uh, so coming to Tonic. So the Tonic is developed by the same people who developed Hyper. Uh, and basically it is implementing gRPC, which is Google Remote Procedure, whatever, uh, or HTTP2. For protocol buffers, uh, you, you have the schema and then you, you, you will need uh, code generations, generators to implement that, uh, that schema in, in a program language that you are using. Uh, Google already provides um, a lot of code generation generators, but it doesn't provide Rust uh, generator. So Prost is uh, from Tokyo and uh, it is a generator, code generator from uh, protofiles for Rust. Uh, so Tonic implements transport structures uh, for server and client stops. To, to communicate over gRPC. Uh, it does support unidirectional and bidirectional streaming. It is one of the pluses of uh, gRPC. Uh, it has encoders, decoders, and compression. So as far as I know, it's almost 100% one-to-one coverage between Google's version of the generators and this one, the Rust one. Uh, so this is very fast again. Uh, you can just uh, look at their page. Again, very simple. So let's go over a implementation. I just want to go over the highlights fast uh, instead of showing them in the in the uh, source files. So let's say I want to implement a service called chat with uh, certain uh, remote procedure calls, join chat log. So join will be me registering uh, for the server. Uh, logging into the server, uh, chat log would return me all the messages that uh, that comes after some time that I define. And then the commit is basically me sending a chat message. 
to the server. Uh, and one of the, uh, let's say types, for instance, member can be defined with, as a, with the keyword message and its fields sh should have the, the, the data, data type and then the field name. Uh, and these will be used for generating the code. And you can also have stuff like uh, enums. So instead of uh, magic numbers, you can assign some constant uh, with the, and combine them into uh, an enum. So in order to generate the code, basically you, you use a tool called tonic build. Uh, usually uh, you compile the, plot, this uh, compilation step is added to the build build file so that every time you build the project, uh, it first compiles uh, or generates the code and then compiles the code, uh, compiles your code with the generated code. And another thing, and after that, after you generate the code, you include uh, that as a module, as a module to your, to your project like this, and then start implementing uh, a trait for your service. So it, it, it creates a chat service as a trait from, uh, from the service definition that you give, and then you have to implement it. Uh, sorry, so a chat, and you have to implement a service. Yeah, so yeah, for instance, if, if you want to implement this RPC, uh, you implement this function, which is uh, mostly generated for you in the, in the module, but you have to implement it. And then the client side is even easier. Uh, so again, you include, the generated code and then within the generated code, you already have a chat client or a service client, let's say, and you can just uh, use it outright by the type definitions that are generated for you as well. Uh, just a short short remark on enums for Rust at least, enums a bit, are a bit tricky. They are not uh, mapped one-to-one -one as enums uh, you have to explicitly convert it into uh, i32 32-bit 32, uh, 32 integers, and this is in the in the in the kind of the readme, but still it's easy to miss. Uh, this is for the server side, for the client side to uh, use it. Uh, you can you 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 have to again convert it to from 32-bit integer to to the enum. Uh, so. Just one remark, another remark that I forgot to put in here is uh, if you are using the latest version of um, Tonic, uh, you usually are not able to use the latest version of Proto, uh, Prost, sorry. So if, if, you, if you see errors like, oh, you have, you've forgotten to implement this one, uh, this trait which you have never defined in any way, uh, those messages go away if you reduce the version of Prost. So after that, quickly, if there are any questions at this point, I can take it, but I guess I can also take it after the demo. I'm going to quickly check the chat if I'm able to. I have no idea about the support for HTTP3. Um, well, I haven't checked that in that detail, but you should uh, check the issue list in the Tonic project. Yeah. So anyway, so let's quickly go through the project. This is the the whole uh, schema, the the proto file that I created. Uh, you you uh, define a package which will be your Rust module, uh, and then uh, you define your service and all the data structures that will be used by the service. If you are going to uh, implement a stream. You indicate it as a stream here, uh, so that the generated code will implement the stream as well. And it's quite straightforward. It's very badly implemented. For instance, I don't check ever for the password or the tokens, uh, so it's very easy to hack. Let's say. So, in the build RS file, I just added this uh, step, tonic build step, that you automatically picks up the protocol proto file and then builds it before it builds the code. And the code itself generates uh, this, this file in one in the dependency list here, the built uh, list here. Uh, and as you can see, it's 
yeah, it's basically implemented in Rust. There are some uh, uh, macros that are being used. So yeah, you can you can search for yourself. Uh, this is very handy uh, if you want to see what they have done and what you have to do, uh, that kind of stuff, unless you are relying on Rust Analyzer, but even Rust Analyzer sometimes gets a bit wonky. Uh, in the server part, yeah, the main part that uh, I have implemented is this uh, chat trait for, for my service. Uh, so since we are using async, uh, so there's this async trait that uh, you have to add for, uh, I think async traits are not native in Rust yet, I guess. So that's that's the, that's the reason that we have to use this. Uh, but basically uh, it's quite straightforward. Uh, you, yeah, most of the stuff is uh, wrapped around the tonic, tonic structs. For instance, request is a tonic struct. Uh, and the reason that I usually check this is, yeah, where are they coming from? Are they, uh, so yeah, some of them are coming from tonic, some of them are coming from Prost, uh, but usually the uh, stuff that you are implementing will come from tonic. Um, and yeah, that's pretty much it. It's a bit uh, hard to decipher. Uh, one thing I want to show is the, the stream. So uh, you, you define a stream as a type, uh, which is also defined in, in here. Uh, anyway, so uh, you create a receiver stream and you create also uh, a channel, a communication channel uh, using, uh, again, Tokyo, communication uh, MPSC channel uh, with a receiver and a transmitter. Uh, and basically you send the receiver to either Hyper or the Tower server that uh, will be run on top of this, that it is a bit uh, opaque to you. And then uh, you basically read and then send it one by one. And again, the commit is straightforward. Uh, the stream is a bit tricky. That's why I wanted to show you that. Um, and then these are some stuff that I wanted to push hacky way so that I can test stuff. Uh, and then basically after that, you create a server, which is already implemented for you uh, using the service uh, that you create here. Uh, so here I also added some some other state that I, I I wanted to put on. So the chat service is a struct that I created uh, with uh, some some locks and uh, atomic uh, reference counters. And then a few other stuff that I added as well on top of that. So other than that, here we create the server uh, and then to the server, yeah, the service and some some other more goodies that comes with the uh, Tokyo, uh, which you can use with Hyper as well. So so that this this shutdown is basically Control C shuts it down. Uh, I don't want to much don't I don't want to dwell on it that much. And the client side, these are some stuff that I added to use it use it in the command line. So it's not very important. But basically, uh, you don't need to do anything here. I am creating the client, connecting to the, uh, I, I'm not even uh, creating the client, sorry. Um, directly connecting, this is implemented for me. Uh, and then all the subsequent fields, stops are created for me. I just need to feed the correct uh, data structure uh, and then wait for the result back. And depending on, but result is you can either handle there or do something with it. And that's pretty much it. Uh, before that, before I go into JavaScript part, I will just show you that uh, horrible chat implementation. So here uh, I'm running the server. Let's build everything. 
since I already built it. <laughs> uh, it didn't do anything else. So here I'm uh, waiting for any uh, any uh, requests. And here uh, I'm going to use the Rust client. So uh, unfortunately, uh, the argument parser that I'm using uh, requires me to <laughs> use the compiled uh, version as well. Uh, I cannot use the cargo run stuff. Uh, and I've created a few commands to uh, use it with this server. Uh, again, these are not important and it's giving me a token. Uh, I wanted to create a real time like oh, chat room experience, uh, but it took too much time. So I. <laughs> Not to. So let's commit uh, a message. Uh, the, the commit is not because I changed the command to send uh, just to be fancy. So yeah, so it works. It is sending me messages. Uh, sorry, I, I am able to send messages and I should be able to read messages as well. Uh, yeah, so these are the test messages that I added. Uh, so you can imagine creating a better UI. Uh, and now, since this is a gRPC, the beauty of gRPC is uh, you don't, you're not, Let's say you implement a service with Rust, but someone else can use the same protocol and implement another client for another language. So that's the beauty of it. So here I'm just using the uh, round the mill Google provided tools for creating uh, the same client in JavaScript. Uh, so uh, these are some uh, some wrappers around the the usual uh, stuff that comes with the out of the box. Uh, I didn't see a promised tool chain, so it's 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 based on uh, callbacks, etc., which is not very good. So these are basically wrappers that convert things into promises. Uh, but uh, yeah, I just created an object, send it, and then read the result. Uh, and in here, the main program, these stuff again is uh, for parsing the arguments that are passed into the program. Uh, and then based on the commands that I uh, that I call, it is just calling the client. So uh, yeah, uh, that part is very straightforward. Uh, well, for JavaScript, at least you can dynamically generate uh, the code instead of pre-generating code, but you can also statically generate and then package the code. Uh, but it's basically uh, same commands. Uh, let's try to join with the same username. So yeah, uh, it throws an error access denied like this, or I can just say equal to, and it gives me the token and you can see it's able to communicate. Uh, I'm not going to send a message, but I'm going to So yeah, I'm able to read messages. Uh, let's send the message as well. And now I can read the messages from here as well. So and that's about it. So I will look at the chat. Might be a dumb question, but it is managing. If is it managing well if struggles needs specific? I am not sure. I think that is uh, that has to be guaranteed because of the protocol. Uh, so I'm not sure. <laughs> also, the questions are very hard. Uh, so I am a novice. I'm I'm a amateur. So uh, does tonic generate 
protofiles into Rust. No, it doesn't. It's the proto, pro, Prost is the generator. Uh, but the Tonic has a builder that uses Prost. So, yeah. Uh, yeah, the, it looked like it did in the build RS because it is using the tool that comes from Tonic. So, uh, the, and yeah, someone else <laughs> already answered it. Uh, just go and use the Prost Django tool to generate. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I think, yeah, what you're trying to say is you can generate the code and then use just that code in other projects. Uh, I'm not sure if there's a way to do that directly in Rust. Probably Protos, Prost itself is doing that, but I haven't used it like that, so. Uh, okay, so someone updated the HTTP3 version. Is there any library beside Tonic for gRPC in Rust? I, as far as I know, I, I don't know any other library. <laughs> uh, so I like, I wasn't trying to use gRPC in production and test several tools. I was just trying to use Tonic itself. <laughs> so that's why I learned gRPC. It wasn't the thing that I wanted to use. Uh, so there isn't other, any other question? I will stop sharing. And um, thank you. Thanks, Erdogan. Um, you, you know, you said at the start there that your um, experience is less than the founders. I'd like to say your experience is definitely more than mine. And, you know, also, you know, like I, I know Jakob is on today, but like you've done such a great job in running this for us. And, you know, I think that's your fourth presentation. You're always willing to fill in. I think your presentations are excellent. So thank you very much for. Thank oh, you. yeah. And can, will you give us your ZSH prompt? I like that. Oh, yeah, it's not ZSH, it's actually another Rust tool called the uh, Starship. Ah, that's cool. Really yeah, like you it. should check, it's it's super nice. Um, there was only one other question there, and it's about byte alignment. Uh, I, my gut is, and Anton, I might lean on you for this one, not to be putting you on the spot, is that gRPC is more about the shipping of the data on the wire. So I think it would probably come down to how we pack across uh, UDP and TCP at that stage, rather than the byte alignment of the, the, the code on in the executable or the binary. I'm not sure, Anton, maybe I'm, keep me honest. Yeah, no further comments. Um, and you can always carry, guarantee Dave's going to come up with something like that. Thanks, David. <laughs> Sticky question for us all. Yeah. Um, I suppose uh, if there's no other questions, vertical there, who I know is on a kind of a tight schedule tonight, I will hand over to Anton.